Um, so the first, if you have questions, just pop them in all the time now. We I can answer anything now. Okay, um, the first question is, if you have spent 10 uh, pounds with no sales, do you stop the ad? Um, usually, yes, it depends. Um, if you have very good engagement, as mentioned earlier, like if you have lots of shares, lots of like, and a very high click-through rate, like at like 8, 9, 10 percent, then um, you you do something right about the targeting but the sign might not be quite right so if you have spent like between 10 and 15 pounds and you have really nothing then yes maximum 15 pounds if you have no sales then then stop the ad and rethink your design first if you have very good engagement and if you have hardly any clicks hardly any likes and anything then rethink the design as well as the targeting have a look at the targeting. If your figures is good, if the click through rate is good, then it might be might be the targeting that matters. And just look again at the groups that are available there on Facebook. Maybe you can find a better group. So like sit down again, do the research, and then come back to the ad and run it one more time. We're looking through all the questions that come here. Um. Um, is the slide um, show going to be made available? Yes, we're gonna um, put everything like the voice recording and the slideshow online. Yeah, the question we have is whether uh, we would limit launches strictly to a Monday. Uh, no, it, it's not the rule that you should launch the campaigns on Monday only, but it is just the best way to organize yourself. So set up the campaigns on Monday, then start running um, running the ads on Tuesday, set up the ads, start running the campaign, and then on Wednesday, Wednesday in the morning you will see directly the results and you will know whether you should stop set sending the ad or um, you should continue with it. But obviously since uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday are the best working days, you can start a little bit later, for example, if your designer didn't come back to you as quickly as you thought they would. Um, so set up the campaign um, during Wednesday, Thursday, so that it would run through Thursday and Friday. Yes. So basically, the most important thing is just to stick to um, the schedule about Facebook ads. I mean, if you don't have time to launch your ads on Tuesday, you can still launch them Wednesday, Thursday, and you will still benefit from those high selling days. But um, you can launch your campaign anytime, of course. If you get your design on the weekend already and you want to get that out of the way, just launch it. Just make sure you have enough, like your campaign length is long enough. Um, to cover um, all the days you want to run your Facebook ads for, but that's it. It's just a recommendation. Um, the next question is, do you recommend Facebook Power Editor? Um, in certain cases, yes. You can just edit a bit more. You can play around with the ad a bit more, and you can make changes sometimes a bit easier there. But to start off with, you probably don't necessarily need it. You probably just want to go on... Um, create an ad, probably a page post engagement ad, like a boost your page, a boost your page, um, your post ad, and you can go through like the normal process. Do you suggest setting up a separate fan page for each niche or a generic fan page? It definitely should be a separate fan page for each niche because you are going to focus on these very people. Uh, to whom you are serving the ad and they would appreciate it much better uh, if you have a separate Facebook page for them. But obviously some time ago you could build up your own community and you can, you still can if you have um, continuous many sales coming from this particular niche. So it will be a leverage for you in the future but um, it will be very good if you could have a separate um, Facebook, uh, Facebook page for each niche as well. The next question is, which colors convert best for men and women? So basically, the best converting styles usually are, um, to go into styles first, is uni, uh, the standard unisex shirts, the women's um, crew neck shirts, the women's v-neck, tank tops, and um, hoodies. Um, hoodies are at the moment a bit out of season, so hoodies work best. Again, from August on, you should definitely include them. Like, you should still include them now, but not as your first style. Your default style during summer should be more the unisex style or the women's style, depending on men or women. Um, and in winter, usually um, the hoodies, 
um, no matter if you target women or men, because that's how you get the most margin as well. And the best star uh, and the best colors, um, usually the best selling designs are usually white, grayish, like pretty bright and are sold on dark shirts, like black, navy, royal and red are probably the best working um, t-shirts, like male colors. If you have um, a women's shirt, you can potentially include like Atelier, which is like a pink color. Um, for hoodies, you have a bit more options anyways, like purple, burgundy and hot pink are very popular as well. Um, we have a question to put up the slide, of the, the first slide of the presentation. Uh, we, will, um, we will put the whole presentation in our um, classroom, February classroom, so, and send you the link to it. You will be able to find all the information there and also uh, there is a lot of information in our uh, newsletters that we send out. So don't worry about missing anything you want. Okay. Uh, Facebook page, we already answered that question. We had a second one about, um, yeah, Facebook page. Create one for each niche specifically. And what you could do just to make your Facebook pages a bit more trustworthy, for example, is put a tiny bit of content onto it. So. First, if you choose a Facebook page, if we quickly go into that for a bit, um, and you have something about scuba diving, then make it a positive name, like I love scuba diving or scuba diving enthusiasts or so on. Then choose like a profile picture, choose a banner image, maybe post a few articles, a few meme, meme pictures or so on, just so if people are not sure where that product is basically coming from and they click onto your Facebook page, do you, get like to find out who you are it just gives you a bit more credit so make sure you populate your page at least a bit to make it a bit more um, yeah trustworthy basically um, yeah we, we mentioned that top sellers uh, launch about 40 campaigns well not a day but usually a week so they, they do launch a lot of campaigns a week the, the five campaigns can be the good starting point and you need to manage to launch as many as five campaigns because you need to set aside some time to prepare the designs and to search through the niche uh, keywords to make sure that your campaigns are properly properly set up and your ads are properly set up. Uh, so um, yes, you you are going to launch com uh, campaigns and ads in different niches probably uh, because you you don't want to overcrowd the one one niche and you don't know whether it is going to work properly whether it's going to be um, generating a lot of sales so try each niche probe it if you haven't done so yet if you haven't found yourself but after you found yourself you can create more designs like one or two design per week into the into the same niche Um, for for your designs, again, we had a question about designs. Um, it would be best to contact those designers because you really know how it works, um, what like the design context we showed you, and we're going to send you an email as well because they know um, they've been designing for T-shirt designs for a long time, so they're probably the best to get you the right design for a T-shirt, and they are also quite quick usually, so always contact those designers. How many fans do you think we need for a Facebook page before we create a campaign? You, you, you don't really need any fans, so we, we know people who create their campaigns having zero fans and zero likes on their Facebook page. Just put a banner image, put an image into your profile, profile picture, like group profile picture. Uh, put a nice name for your Facebook page. Uh, and populate it a little bit. You shouldn't spend too much time on it, just maybe five to ten minutes, throw in a couple of images or one or two um, links to websites, magazines or articles, and that, that is enough. You will basically get the likes through your ads, then you won't believe it how many likes to your page you get. And if you find a successful um, niche, then people will like the page and you will run more and more ads and more and more campaigns in this niche which are linking to your Facebook page and then your Facebook page will grow automatically. Uh, 
um, yes, we do post the niche specific content in there. If you can find the magazine and take a couple of articles from there or take a couple of memes from the internet and put them into the Facebook page, that would be great. Um. If you have a massive fan page that hasn't been monetized, is PPE still the best way to get traffic? Um, one problem is with, um, like a year or two ago, it was um, amazing if you had a big Facebook page with lots of likers and so on, because you could just make a normal post on the page and it would reach maybe 70% of the people who liked the page for free in the newsfeed. But Facebook unfortunately turned that off. So basically, if you post in the Facebook page now, it will reach maybe a few percent of those people who like the page. That's why you should create an ad to for like if you make a post and you really want all the people who like your Facebook page see the post, then create an ad. Like depends on what the goal is. Like uh, the question is here if PP is still the best way to get traffic. Um, Apparently, we saw a shift a bit in if PPE or website conversion ads work better. Um, the best thing is you, if you really want to test it for yourself, then um, just set up the exact same ads for the same campaign as a PPE ad and for a website conversion ad and see what works best for you. That can differ from account to account, just what, how Facebook has saved the details and so on. So you might just want to test that as well if you're really interested in that. Otherwise, you can just create um, simply a PPE ad and target people who are connected to your page. You can do that in the Facebook um, ad setting when you um, create your audience. You can even split the budget, use half of the budget for a PPE and half of the budget to website clicks. Then which age and gender demographics are best to target? Um, well, the, if you go into a niche and you can target women first, then usually women are a bit more prone to buy, they're a bit easier to sell to. So if you have like the motorcycling mums or whatever, the middle-aged women are actually one of the best buying niches. So if you go in a new niche and you have, you can make the decision between men and women and they're equal, then go for the women first because it's going to be just a bit easier. And um, age, from if you include people who are 18, like 18 to 20, 22 or so, then you might get a lot of likes and shares. And if that's your purpose, then that's very good. That might spread the word a lot. Like if you get lots of shares then you get lots of free um, traffic, basically. But if you really want to only focus on sales and you don't really care about the social engagement, then you should exclude those 18 year olds and start at like 25 because they have the money. 18 year olds might like you. Um, Facebook ad, but they don't have the money to buy it. So you have to decide what's more important, the engagement or the sales. Um, you, you need to ask the designer for the PNG um, sized uh, images, final images, definitely not G, uh, GP, JPG. Uh, if you are able to am amend them in uh, Illustrator, if you have a special software, you can ask them to uh, the designer to send you the designs in uh, AI or any other type amendable. Yeah, so get the designs uh, in PNG. That's the format you will upload as well on February. And the next question is if uh, um, if you have to tell the designer um, how if the designer knows DPI or if you need to tell them, you should tell them the specifications and the resolution you want to have. So ideally you want to have um, 3000 times 3000 pixels and 300 DPI. So tell, because the campaigners, um, the designers might not have worked with someone like you before, so always tell them what resolution and format you need your designs in. Um, sports sports shirts and cool dry shirts. Uh, so this this might be uh, the question about whether to use the specific type of shirts for sports related niche niches. Yes, sure. Um, they people who are in the sports niche they will be more eager to buy something that will protect them from, from sports difficulties. Um, TV, um, the next um, statement is that TFU say um, the TFU page aggregates Teespring sales. 
I think it doesn't only um, take the data from Teespring, it takes from other um, t-shirt selling platforms as well. But um, you can't look for campaigns on Fably at the moment. We didn't include the search function yet because we want to avoid people just copying everything. But just use TFU on Teespring. There are, there are similar campaigns on every platform anyway. So you can get a good insight also on those platforms. Search through uh, Pinterest, you will not see how many items were bought in that particular campaign, but you will see some design ideas from there. Um, overlapping niches, vegan and cyclists. Um, is it? To, do you need to have two separate niche pages or just one? Uh, if you have the design that will appeal to two niches at the same time, then you can run it from either of the um, of the website pages. Um, but if you are going to run a couple of campaigns that would specify on one of the of the niches in particular, then it's better to separate them and to have uh, two different uh, Facebook pages. Um, can you give us an example to check out a Facebook campaign and add for a t-shirt campaign? Um, you will get that in the next uh, emails um, where we will show you how to set up an actual ad for a realistic campaign as well. So we will show you that entire process there and yeah, for an actual um, campaign which worked as well to give you a, a nice overview. So you will get that in the next week. Um, when we are targeting the foreign language niche, would you recommend every aspect to be in that language? For example, February campaign page, Facebook ad, niche, uh, fa Facebook niche page. Uh, yes, it's better to have everything uh, translated into the language uh, of people you are going to target uh, because they will understand better what, what is needed from them during the campaign and since they like the design they might miss out on how to use the platform because um, we might not have all the languages so just uh, translate as much as you can uh, to make sure that people move smoothly from the campaign page to the checkouts page yeah so basically everything like the description the title, the design, if you want to, and the Facebook ad copy, basically what you, the message of your Facebook ad. Make sure that's all nicely translated as well, like because errors usually hint that the um, cell is not trustworthy. So make sure you have that all nice and neat. So the next question is if it is worth running Facebook ads for a family store or if you would just stick to individual campaigns. Um, there are two options there. The store option is definitely an option. You benefit from cross-selling. So basically, all your um, if someone buys from one of the campaign pages, um, which is in a store, and they complete the checkout, then they will get um, the other products from your store suggested after the, in the checkout page, which is good for you. So they might they might see a second one and see oh and think yeah I want to have this one as well. So you benefit from that. And if you promote a store, always make sure um, that in each description of each campaign you have in that store, that you paste the store link as well. So if people click on click on that one campaign within the store, that um, you want that to give them the opportunity to link back to the store. So make sure you do that. And also um, another option would be there's something new called multi-product ads which you can do on Facebook, where you can basically show different um, campaigns within the sa same ad. It will just scroll through your various t-shirt stand and there you can include your store link at the end as well. We're going to put an article about the multi-product ads in the, in the family classroom soon and we'll notify you through the um, secret Facebook page. Um, the other question that we have is uh, whether PNG files that are around 14 megabytes will be uploaded into the system? Um, um, the maximum we accept at the moment is 5 megabytes of images. Um, just because a high resolution image doesn't mean it needs to be a high file size. So tell you, that's, that's another specification you should actually give your designer. Tell them it must be under 5 megabytes. Um, even with a resolution of 3000 times 3000 pixels and 300 dpi, 
it's not necessary that it's like 10 megabytes bigger so um another question is if you i should turn off my ads on a monday um that is not necessary not um if you set up your facebook ad for example on a wednesday and you have it running for a week like on wednesday to wednesday and although monday is a low traffic day if your ad is performing well just let it run over monday um don't scale it up though like don't think because just sun even if sunday was incredible don't put more money into it because monday won't be as good but you can let it run over monday as well you should just avoid setting it up on monday or on sunday evening basically and the last, another question that we have uh, is how the big selected niche groups should be when you are using Facebook audience intersites. So whenever you insert uh, the keywords, make sure that the uh, the people number of people that are included into those targeted are more is more than uh, one thousand people. Because uh, the smaller your target group is, the more expensive it is for Facebook to target those people because these are very, very specific and narrow niche uh, people. Uh, just make sure that your target group is not broad enough but also is not too small. Um, the next one is what image is best um, to use for Facebook ads? An image of the t-shirt taken from Fably. Um, you can use the Ad Factory, which is a tool created by Teespring, and you can use that with your um, Fably campaigns as well. Just um, uh, we have a post about that in the Fably classroom about Ad Factory. Um, it is best to use your t-shirts. Yes, make a screenshot of your t-shirts, make a nice ad out of it um, for a. PPE ad it's usually the resolution um, the dimensions are ideally 1000 by 1000 and just get them to get a, like you can just do that in paint as well um, take one t-shirt which you blow up massively so you can read the entire text basically and then you might want to place one small t-shirt on the side so um, the purpose of that is that people, if they scroll through the newsfeed, they can immediately read what's written on the T-shirt. And that T-shirt, the small one on the side, shows them, oh, it's actually a T-shirt. Um. Um, we have two more minutes, so we quickly scroll through the last questions. If you have any more questions after this, just post in the Facebook group. We're going to answer, answer all questions there as well. Um, uh, what about turning off ads overnight? No, you don't have to turn off the ads overnight. Facebook will usually allocate, like if there are no people on Facebook logged in, then Facebook can't serve the ad to anyone. So you don't necessarily need to turn it off overnight. Um, this is about payment methods, like your customers can pay with PayPal and credit card. Um, credit card includes like Amos, MasterCard and Visa. And you, uh, on the other hand, you can receive your um, payouts, like your profit payouts via um, bank transfer, PayPal and Payoneer. Um, do campaigns during uh, public holidays, especially during weekdays, gener generally increase or decrease in sales? Uh, there is a good traffic coming during uh, holidays as well, because people are sitting at home uh, and they have more time at their dispose, dis disposal. They have additional income, so they can. They are more likely to buy additional items. So yes, it is a good idea to keep uh, your um, ad running during a holiday, even if it is Monday. Okay. Um, and um, what the last questions here is now. Um, how does the buddy system work? Um, if you click on the link, um, which you're going to see in the recording, um, you're going to get be taken to a questionnaire there you just type in your location and your skills and then we try to add up people from as like from a close location so maybe you can meet up personally and with like one analytical person with a creative person so you can take the most out of both skills so yeah um we also going to post the link in the group so please all join the group um so um any more questions, please post them from now on in the Facebook group. 
Um, and don't worry about it, the recording of like voice, screen, everything, you're going to see the presentation online. We post that in the group as well. And we're going to send you an email again. You will get an email as well this week with the link to the group again in case you are not a member yet. Thank you very much for your attention and for your wonderful questions. And we, we hope that this was helpful. And, and we look forward to working with you. Yeah. See you soon. Bye.